Hello and welcome to BharatShakti.in. This is part of our technology series today. We have been talking about artificial intelligence when we started the technology series and thereafter we have gone on to 5G. We've only had one episode on 5G and today we'll have the second episode on 5G. For this episode on 5G, I have with me the same guest as last time, Commander Milind Kulshreshta. Good evening, sir. Commander. Thank you, Commander. Welcome to Bharat Shakti uh, Commander Milind Kulshreshta has been working on 5G H computation and absolutely the best of technologies that we have today. And uh, he's also the owner of his own company, AI Kairos, which deals in, with 5G. Uh, welcome, Commander. Welcome to Bharat Shakti uh, You see, we, we talked about uh, 5G last time. I want to continue the dis discussion from where we really left it there. And uh, the first question that I have in mind are what are the ap applications of 5G in defense? Uh, which are the expected one to be seen in the near future as such? So, uh, military communication and machine-to-machine -machine communication are going to be two uh, large beneficiaries of the 5G uh, communication, uh, which is basically one of the technologies that comes to my mind outright is the edge computing, especially for the real-time interaction and real-time processing, uh, what we see on the battlefield information. Uh, mostly everybody in defense is aware about the kind of information that gets generated on a battlefield uh, from the sensors, which could be radars, electronic warfare, or to the weapons like surface to missiles, SSMs, uh, even artillery fire has got a lot of information to be collated, processed. Uh, with artificial intelligence and um, uh, machine learning coming in, it is going to be mandatory that we uh, have 5G, at least in the private uh, network available around the place. Uh, we also can have, uh, you know, uh, applications in healthcare, uh, something like field hospitals where remotely surgeons can uh, carry out the operation or do the diagnostics. Uh, various vital signs of uh, soldiers who are, uh, let's say, 10,000 soldiers uh, somewhere in the old uh, environment, uh, their uh, uh, information can be collected together using 5G kind of a technology. Uh, remote uh, operations can are possible uh, using various technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality. These technologies are possible once we have the 5G. For example, uh, the AR set is very heavy. With the edge computation coming with 5G, uh, we would have less heavy or maybe like goggles, uh, these uh, kind of headsets. The size of the virtual glasses is going to help everybody use them, especially in the battlefield. Uh, the ultra uh, low level latency uh, signals are going to be very useful when it comes to machine to machine. Uh, we talk about shipyards where all the centers are interconnected. Uh, Industry 4.0 is something Many of the shipyards, including naval shipyards, are being uh, looking forward to implementing as a technology. Uh, a 5G private network is going to be the most useful over here. Uh, we have a base workshop uh, with huge amount of information already there on fiber optic. Uh, I can say fiber optic wireless counterpart is the 5G technology, which we have uh, and we have been talking about today. Uh, when it comes to uh, technology like uh, data fusion, multi-platform, multi-sensor data fusion. We are talking about humongous amount of information coming from various sensors which have to be not only collated, aligned in the time domain and the spatial domain, but also transferred as a tactical data link for decision to be taken by, let's say, on the other side. So 5G is going to be the backbone of this kind of information. Uh, this also helps in making what every uh, military is looking for is a common operating picture. Uh, imagine with the tri services uh, network being there. So 5G is going to be really instrumental in helping and assist in creating the common operational picture. Um, drones, unmanned vehicles, all are going to be reliant on the 5G technology, uh, which is what defense is already implementing. Indian Defense Forces have uh, taken leaps and bounds when it comes to implementation of technology high-speed network, uh, mobile network, what is the backbone of any of the, you know, our combat net radios, they are also going to be very, very, uh, you know, reliant on the 5G technology for the efficiency. Uh, coming to various edge computing uh, technologies, we already have the cloud computing. Now we have the edge computing. 
and there's something on hybrid computing, fog computing. So these are the technologies which are associated with 5G, possible only when we have 5G kind of a technology which has come in. I can say that there are five major enablers. One is software-defined network, like the network knows how to pass on the information which is the most suitable route, which has delivered the best and most efficient with the least you know, latency information, which is a desire of any tactical data link, which any of the armed forces the branches they are working on. A network function virtualization is either NFV, as it's called, which comes along with the R5G. Massive MIMO, I know there are many jargons which are associated with the new technology, but uh, uh, they have a definition behind them. Uh, radio access dynamically is a 5G feature. Device to device communication. Uh, that means your uh, sensor and the neighboring sensor also can talk to each other. It's not that they are as a star topology linked with the center. So they can be talking to each other. Uh, we have edge computing, which is going to give the local storage and various other features related to data analysis locally, decision making locally. And this is a feature which every military is looking forward to when it comes to automation of their uh, warfare. Right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think that was again a wonderful explanation. Uh, if we can go a little bit into China, you see our viewers will be interested very much about uh, what's happening in China, China, how far are they ahead of us, where are they really poised as on date. We tried to stop their entry into our 5G uh, developing networks, etc. If you could just uh, give us a, an overview of the state of affairs with the Chinese. Uh, China had taken uh, 5G as a national policy uh, way back, uh, maybe a decade plus uh, before. Uh, the idea was uh, definitely to have control over their own people. I'll just bring it out how 5G is going to help. Uh, the kind of government governance which they run uh, totally relies on technology and monitoring their own people, how they move around. However, the technology was also evolved from the military perspective. The Chinese from China Mobile is one of the largest operator in terms of subscribers. Uh, obviously, there's a population, there's a subscriber base, and that is where the data crunching, data mining, and the artificial intelligence aspect here got much better trained engines than what probably we have planned. China Telecom uh, has added 5 million 5G subscribers just last month. And now it has got 300 million users, uh, something which uh, we probably will take some time to reach it. Uh, why? Because the infrastructure will take that much of money and time to get established and users are going to jump on this technology. Uh, during 2022, uh, their telecommunication firms had a total of 80 million 5G subscribers. So they are far ahead uh, than India in terms of that. Now that has got some implications when it comes to India. Uh, they have invested about $200 billion in this industry. Uh, and over 80% of the large hospitals, key universities, major cultural uh, places, all are integrated. The smartest cities are integrated. Uh, the military-civil fusion has already started happening when it comes to their technology. Uh, we all know when it comes to uh, uh, war, it is the industry and the support mechanism, the fallback options which come into four and they have very nicely integrated uh, and very efficiently integrated the civil and the military. Uh, so uh, firms like um, uh, Huawei uh, or Hawaii as many call them and ZTE are required by Chinese government order to share whatever information touches their system. So that means wherever Huawei and ZTE are uh, placing their equipment, uh, that information was on a cloud and that is what is not safe. The cloud is there probably in China. Secondly, what has also come to light is like when they install their equipment, they put some CCTV camera or sensors, which usually are facing towards key installation. So uh, it has become a big no in US, Europe, Japan to look at these Chinese firms. Uh, the utilization which China has done with the 5G is to ensure that C4I capability, the command, control, communication and intelligence with surveillance is something which they have really integrated with the 5G. Uh, enabling improved situational awareness uh, wherever they are. Uh, the National Defense Mobilization Plan has been created around networking their uh, 5G 
anti civil population with the military uh there there is a rapid mobilization of massive amounts of resources when it comes to war and that is what integration they have got to try to achieve um uh, artificial intelligence they have taken a leap ahead when it comes to 5g uh they have so many cctv cameras throughout the china the whole information is getting collated through 5g which is the government's initiative to get in real time whatever action they have to take against their own people or otherwise in uh, tibet uh, china claims to have more than 98% of the villages which were you know already connected with 4g and fiber optic uh, cables but now china is putting 5g network over there um, obviously the reason is uh, given otherwise but the fact is that uh, as close to as tibet we have uh, this problem uh, coming up of 5g uh, they have one of the radar stations uh, now in that radar station they have established a 5g network very close to it a private network now the electronic warfare radar and the communication uh, cyber landscape has totally changed with these kind of technology which has it has tried to implement uh, unmanned aerial vehicle uh, integration with 5g is something which they have got uh, you know advanced uh, position uh, now chinese government is only talking about 6g as a priority project for uh, coming years so they are uh, quite ahead in this technology from us wait uh, thank you so much for such a uh, covering such a wide scope really uh, i have this last question for you and can you comment on the sort of uh, future battlefields that we will have with all these emerging technologies like 5g edge etc uh the future battlefield uh, when we talk about uh, 2030 is going to be very much on technology uh the warfare may start from within a country uh, before it becomes uh, you know one border to the second border uh, as we have seen the ukraine war also uh, the drones and hybrid warfare has taken uh, you know more uh, importance uh, coming to 5g uh, mainly it will be a data which is going to be the battle uh dependent uh, outcomes uh for example if we have got hard real time data which is required uh with a very strict latency 5g comes to the rescue soft real time data which is uh, what we do when we whenever we design a command and control system or let's say a launch system uh, the moment we have a man pushing the button it we call it a soft real time uh then we have non real time is not time sensitive and can be tolerated now 5g can give a cover to all this at one go ultra low latency is a very desirable feature whenever we are transmitting the uh, combat information from one location to the other uh, which is done as a part of a regular uh, you know uh, conduct of exercises also 5g is going to allow that to happen especially when we have uh, gbps uh, peak data speeds which are available uh, we'll see more of uh, augmented reality kind of thing coming on the soldier the uh, sensors on the soldier are going to be integrated much more efficiently uh, the 5g new radio nr technology as it called is going to bring wireless air interfaces include spectrums that are going to be nn a uh, very important technology is the 5g slicing which has come already research is going on into it so that we can make within the private network some more networks Uh, so that is also going to give a, a huge impetus to the command and control platforms whenever it, it comes to the warfare functionality with 5g artificial intelligence is no more a dream it is going to be implemented by all the military especially indian military is working towards that uh, the command centers have not going to be you know uh, the decision maker it's going to be the edge which is going to give the processed information to the command center to take a decision so we'll have improved data management on the battlefield we are going to have a predictive network demand feature uh, local uh, awareness information going to come through the 5g and improved resource management which is very important when we have a huge uh, defense force so these features are going to assist in the computation platform which are going to be on the edge are going to be on the cloud and on the fog uh, and the performance measures like lower operational cost higher quality of service and energy efficiency is going to be the new jargons which are going to come in the battlefield of the future 
Right. Thank you very much, Commander. I think that's been an absolute lucid explanation and I'm sure we will want you back to take on a few other areas that you have expertise in. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you, viewers. Thanks for logging on to BharatShakti.in. Do log in now and then and you'll find interesting topics being discussed. And do go to our social media sites, like us, and let us know in case there are any subjects that you want us to take up for discussion. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.